we are living in a very abnormal world nowadays. What was abnormal become normal? For example, wearing masks used to be a certain place for example, visiting people who are sick in the hospital. Positive used to be something to be celebrated. But nowadays, positive COVID is something to be afraid of. Recently, Clementi, where I stay, is on the news, like many parts of Singapore. The Clementi 448 market and food center is closed for two weeks from Thursday. I visited the place on last Sunday evening. Out of abundant cautions, I went to pick up the free DIY test kit and praise the Lord. It was negative. Hallelujah! You might wonder why I'm so happy being negative. Well, remember, this is a new normal. Where negative is positive and positive is negative. Do you get that? Never mind if you don't because I myself a bit confused too. Anyway, nowadays I love negative. Negative is good. Before this pandemic, people would not understand if I said, I am positive that I am not positive. Or I'm glad that I'm negative. But now, people would understand what it means. Likewise, telling congregations that we will not be gathering for Sunday worship service would be something unthinkable before this pandemic. But here we are, staying at our own homes and worshiping the Lord on Sunday. We have a new term for this. It is called new normal, which is actually not normal or abnormal. We are truly living in an abnormal world. But thank God He has blessed the church with Bible, the truth that will continue to guide and protect us. People have been trying to destroy it, burn it, and forbid it. But through God's grace and His mercy, the Bible has been preserved and passed down to us and I believe many generations to come. Though the Bible is not perfect, but the Bible contains the truth of God. The Bible is not God and God is not the Bible because God who inspired the Bible is much greater than the Bible itself. The main goal is that through the Bible, we get to know our God better, build a close relationship with Him, and continue to grow in our faith and pass it to others too. Although the Bible is not perfect, it is still very important and very essential for spiritual life of believers. Just as our physical bodies need air, water, and food, our spiritual being, spiritual man, needs this essential, namely the Word of God, which is described as air, water, food, and even spiritual weapons. Without God's Word, it will not only endanger our spiritual being, but it will also cause Christians to be defeated in spiritual warfare. Even though God has planned for us as the people who are more than conqueror, but without the Word of God, we will be losers. That is why we must always read, listen, meditate, memorize and study the words of God. But one of the greatest struggles for believers is that when our daily life experiences seems to be very different from what it is written in the Bible, we encounter disappointments with God, with His Word. And that's the title of, this, of my sermon today. I mean, the promises and the principles of truth that we believe in Bible are not the same experiences that we encounter in real life from time to time. During this pandemic, we hear news that not only people who don't know believe, who do not know God, who do not believe in God that infected and many have died, but also godly Christians, even pastors, even those who have practiced strict precautionary measures 
One example is a church in France in the early days of this pandemic. One Christian magazine wrote an article entitled, We Pray for Healing, But God Brought a Pandemic. It is about the struggle faced by one of the great churches in France. In early 2020, the Christians Open Door Church held their annual conference. More than 2,000 participants came from various parts of Europe and even the world. They held worship services, praising God, listen to God's word, and even pray for the sick and praise God for the healing miracles that occur in their midst. Of course, this conference was held before France did the lockdown at that time. However, the pandemic hit the church. Five hundreds of the church members were infected. Eighty-two of them had to be hospitalized, and 32 of them died. The church experienced great struggles, not only physical, but also spiritual. Coupled with the surrounding community who blamed them while they were isolated and grieving, the church members were severely accused and even faced threat, death threat. Church workers who return to the church building for recordings must bring, secure, must bring security guards. While the pastor himself, Peter Smith, was also infected and had, had to be hospitalized, he has to still minister to the church, the congregations who were infected, who was hospitalized even though through phone call. In such a situation, not only a few Christians wonder about their faith, but some even left their faith. Faith that doesn't last in the midst of this pandemic and that that afflicted them. What should we do when we encounter such experiences? When our life experience conflicted with our beliefs, that based on the Bible. How can we continue to believe in the midst of these conflicting life experiences that bring about disappointment? John 11 records a story that illustrates the reality of this struggle. When Lazarus was seriously sick, Mary and Martha, the sisters, sends a message to the Lord Jesus, hoping that Jesus will come to heal him. Because not only that they believed that Jesus could heal their brother, Jesus would be willing to come and heal because Jesus loved them very much. In John 11, verse 1 to 3, the Bible said a man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters, Mary and Martha. Her brother Lazarus was sick. The two, so the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. John 11 verse 4 to 6 say, But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Mar Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. What an incredible story and conflicting story that we just heard. Jesus loved Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. When he heard the news, people expecting him to come and heal Lazarus, but the Bible said that he stayed where he was for another two days. So what do we do when we are in this kind of situations? A conflicting 
situations, what we believe is to be true, but yet the reality seems to be different. Mary and Martha believed that Jesus loved them very much and loved Lazarus very much, and Jesus was able to heal him, but yet he did not do it. So what do we do? Number one, we have to learn to understand God's word better. The tendencies of some believers when encountering disappointments is to discredit the truth of the Bible, whether they consider it as irrelevant or worse. I want to quickly share with you three principles. What should we do when we encounter disappointment with God and His Word? Number one, learn to understand God's Word better. The tendencies of some believers when encountering disappointment is to discredit the truth of the Bible, whether they consider it as irrelevant or worse. But this should not be our response. Instead, people often time need to understand God's word better. Need to understand God's purpose and intent, the context and the timing. For example, John 11 verse 4, Jesus said, when Jesus heard the news of the messengers of Mary and Martha, and Jesus said, the disease would not lead to death. I am sure in this case, I assume that the messenger must have been overjoyed and quickly returned to bring the good news to Mary and Martha. But in reality, Lazarus died. What was in the hearts and the minds of Mary and Martha and those who heard the news, especially the messengers? As people who knew Jesus closely, Mary and Martha probably did not blame Jesus. So that the other option is to assume that the messengers might have misheard or misinterpreted Jesus' words. Because there is no way that Jesus will be lying to them or make me any mistakes in this matter. Although in this case, the messenger was not at fault. But this can happen with the translations and interpretations of the Bible. This is probably what we do most often with the Bible. And it is valid because it may be mistranslated. Some part of the Bible might be not as clear as we want because of the translation's mistake. One of the examples is about Daniel's friends when they were about to be thrown into the fire. In the Indonesian Bible translation, Indonesian Translation Bible said this, Jika Allah kami yang kami puja sanggup melepaskan kami, literally can be translated if the God whom we serve is able to save us. As if they were not sure whether their God had the ability to save them. But listen to these English translations. It says, if we are thrown into the blessing furnace, the God whom we serve is able to save us. There is no doubt, no questions whether their God was able to save them or not. They just simply say, if my God who is able to save us, He chose not to, we will still continue to be faithful to Him. That is why it is important for us to study the Word of God seriously. For those of us who speak few languages, who understand, who read and understand few languages, it is good to compare one translation to another translation because there is a possibility there are some elements lost in the translations. Because we know and we believe that God is never wrong and He never lies to us. 
I don't mean to question the purity of the Bible, but as I said, the Bible is imperfect. It's not perfect because the people who wrote it, they were not perfect either, as well as the translators. What is important for us to do is to continue to study the Bible carefully. We study it diligently. Do not assume that it's not true or not for you or etc. because just your experience is different from what the Bible says. Because the Bible says it was recorded for us too. So we have to study it, learn from it. The Bible said, for everything that was written before was written for our lessons, that we might hold fast to hope through endurance and the comfort of the scriptures. So the scriptures and the Bible will comfort you with its words. So we can find hope in the scriptures. Another example is about prayer. For example, Jesus said, Have faith in God. I'll tell you the truth. You can say to these mountains, May you be lifted up and thrown into the seas, and it will happen. But you must really believe it will happen and no doubt in your heart. I tell you, you can pray for anything and if you believe that you have received it, it will yours. It will be yours. But when you are praying, first forgive anyone you are holding a grudge against so that your Father in heaven will forgive your sins too. Some scriptures at verse 26. But if you refuse to forgive, your Father in heaven will not forgive your sins. In this passage, Jesus clearly talks about the important elements of faith and forgiveness. But we also need to consider other parts of the Bible that talks about prayer and the answers of prayer. For example, 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 and 15 declares, This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to His will, He, will, he hears us. And if we know that He hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask of Him. This passage of Scripture talks about the essential elements of God's will in fulfilling the petitions of our prayers. So you see, your prayer sometimes might not be answered as you wish you, you, want it to, you wanted it to be. But there are some elements that we have probably have to fulfill it. And the last one that we have to understand is that God's will is above everything else. This brings us to our second point. That when we encounter disappointment with God and His Word, we need to learn what is God's perspective on the matter. That is to say that we need to see the issue from the eyes and understanding of God in the context of His purpose and intent. When Jesus said, this disease will not lead to death. In fact, Lazarus died. It can be very confusing, not only to Mary, Martha, let alone the messengers and the community. This feels like a contradiction because at the time, they could only show part of the story. Jesus had not come. Lazarus has not been raised from the dead. But when the entire story has ended, just as you and me, when we have the opportunity to see the entire story, indeed, Lazarus was still alive. He was resurrected from death, and he continued to live on this earth until he died again from other causes, not that disease. Over time, it is only when we have God's perspective, the entire story, 
when we understand God's intentions and purpose, we can understand that God's word are never contradictory. His promises are always yes and amen. We are not only we are not the only ones that, who struggle with this matter. The writer Psalm 73 expressed the same challenge and disappointment and seemingly contradictory of God's word until when he had God's perspective on the matter. Psalm 73 Truly God is good to Israel, to those whose hearts are pure. But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone. For I envy the proud, and I saw them prosper despite their weakness. They seem to live such a painless lives. Their bodies are so healthy and strong. They don't have troubles like other people. They are not plagued with problems like everyone else. It can be very disappointing, isn't it? When you see the wicked the bad people prosper, happy and healthy. But yet, the righteous people who love God and, and follow God and believe in the Bible, but yet encounter disappointment. But let's continue to read some more verses of Psalm 73. Verse 12. Look at these wicked people enjoying a life of ease while their riches multiply. Did I keep my heart pure for nothing? Did I keep myself innocent for no reasons? I get nothing but trouble all day long. Every morning brings me pain. If I had really spoken this way to others, I would have been a traitor to your people. So I try to understand why the wicked prosper, but what a difficult task. It is. Then I went on to your sanctuary, O oh God, and I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. So do not take actions and speak according to your feelings and emotions, which are filled with frustrations and disappointments, which are often influenced by our inaccurate perceptions on the matter. Paul experienced, he said, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. He continued to say, That is why we never give up. Though our bodies are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. For our present troubles are small and won't last very long, yet they produce for us a glory that's Fastly overweight, overweight them, and will last forever. So we don't look at the troubles we can see now. Rather, we fix our gaze on things that cannot be seen. For the things we see now will soon be gone, but, we th but the things we cannot see will last forever. Amen to that. When our eyes are on Jesus, when our eyes are on the eternal things, when our eyes have the perspective of God in eternity, we will never give up in the face of disappointment in life. Principle number three. When we encounter disappointment with God and the scripture, we have to learn to surrender to God willingly accept God's methods, God's way, and God's time.
timing. We must admit that often the methods and the timing that we want is different from the way and the timing that God wants. Human often want to be blessed by a lottery method. People want to get rich quickly, want to solve problems quickly. But God blesses day by day and gradually become more and more. I believe we all want this pandemic to go away quickly. And as believers, we have been praying for this so we can go back to our all normal. But we also realize that often God has purposes and plans that are far more beautiful and higher than we think and imagine. The Bible says, Now all glory to God, who is able through His mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. John 11, 33. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him and he was deeply troubled. And Jesus asked, where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him? But some said, This man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb, a cave with a stone roll across its entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested. protested Lord, he had been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, Didn't I tell you that you will see God's glory if you believe? Why is our time often different from God's time? Because what we want to achieve is different from what God wants to achieve. Mary and Martha wanted Lazarus to be healed. But God wanted to raise Lazarus from death so that God's name will be glorified, so that our joy will be full and we could believe in Jesus our Lord as Savior. Just like athletes who wins a race, they rejoice greatly, but their joys will be overflow when they see the flag of their nations raised and the national anthems play. Tears of joy overflow from the depths of their hearts filled with pride. In the time of struggles and disappointment, people feel that God does not care because of the delay, which oftentimes lead them to commit mistakes. For example, when King Saul did not want to wait for the prophet Samuel to come to make the sacrifice. He committed sins against God. In the recorded history of 185 generations, only 10 generations of humans have lived peacefully without war in this world. Often the cause are tri uh, or trigger of war is the conflict between the Jews and the surrounding nations. This happened because the impatience Sarah was waiting for God's promise. So Ishmael was born, whose descendants become the sworn enemies of Isaac's descendants. We have to realize that our timing is not necessarily the same as God's timing. What we believe, that He makes all things beautiful in its time. No wonder Jesus said, but thankfully, I was not present at that time when Lazarus was sick. We live in a constraints of space and time. 
But God is not limited by time and space. Jesus said, roll the stone aside. Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protest, protested. Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, Did I, didn't I tell you that you, that you will see God's glory if you believe? John 11 once again tell us the story. They roll the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. Jesus prayed out loud. And the people that standing there heard what Jesus was praying. And then Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in the grave clothes, his face wrapped in the head cloth. And Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Lazarus has been laying on the tomb, in the tomb for four days. For Mary and Martha and those around them, the arrival of Jesus was too late. And he will not be able to do anything because Lazarus has died. But it turns out that for God, nothing is impossible. No matter how gloomy and helpless our circumstances are, the Lord Jesus is able to help us. Our thought that revolve around our own abilities and circumstances often see the impossibility. But God has a plan that goes beyond all our limited thoughts. Believers must always believe that the step of the righteous are ordered by God, that God works together in all things for our good, and God makes everything beautiful in its time. We have to continue to hold on to these truths. Believe that God, the God that we worship in Christ Jesus, He loves us so much because God is love. In other words, God cannot do anything else against His own nature and character, all His deeds and plans for you and for me is the expressions of His unfathomable love. So continue to trust His way and His timing. Surrender to the Lord. And we believe all things work together for the good of people who love Him. God bless you and thank you for your attentions. I hope you have been greatly blessed through this airing today. And let me remind you once again, Next Sunday, we will only have online Sunday services. This will be our new normal, having church services online only. We will let you know when our on-site service resume. We need to continue to cry out to God for His intervention in this current pandemic. And if you have been blessed by this sharing today, please do forward, share it to others too. Let's bow ahead in pray. As we close, Father, we thank you for today, for this opportunity to listen and study the words of God. We pray that you will continue to help us in the midst of these struggles. And even, Lord God, help us when we encounter disappointment with you and the Scripture. Because we believe that nothing is impossible for you and you love us and never forsake us. Help us to understand your words more. Help us to have your perspective of God so we will not limit it by our limitations. Father, I pray that you bless your people. Bless them in their business, in their job. Bless them in their families, in their study. Protect them from any sickness and diseases. 
Open up the gates of heaven and bless them, Lord, in every area of their life. We thank you, Father. Would you please lift up both your hands and receive the blessings of the Lord. May the blessings of our Heavenly Father, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the anointing and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you from now on and forevermore in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday. Have a great week ahead. I hope you continue to stay safe and stay healthy. God bless you. And since we are still in this middle, in the middle of this pandemic, as a church, we'd like to initiate what we call the Care Fund program to be a blessing to the community. This Care Fund will be used to help all foreigners who are residing in Singapore and this country with various types of long-term passes who might have been greatly affected by the current pandemic situation. So if you like to apply for this care fund, all the details is available at our website link shown below. We will provide groceries vouchers, school essentials vouchers, transport vouchers, school fees, etc. for those who are in need and affected by this pandemic. And if you like to donate for this course, Every dollar that you donate will be matched dollar to dollar by the government and thought board up to $100,000. So help us to help others who are in it. You can do so by donating for this course. All the details for you to apply or to donate can be found on our website www.nbcsingapore.org slash care fund. We are blessed to be a blessing to many.